In 2008, every day, Swissprod has stocked 4,000 new sequences and has been visited by 100,000 scientists who consulted 2 million web pages. It is really exciting to see a molecule on the screen on Monday and on the following Tuesday to treat a patient with it. Bioinformatics applications in clinical research are steadily growing. One particular area of interest is oncology, where the need for tailored molecules is of the utmost importance. All our research activity is focused on cancer. Bioinformatics can bring new treatments to all these patients. Bioinformatics can predict the interactions between molecules using 3D simulation and thus allow the creation of new therapeutic agents acting against cancer. These can be similar to conventional drugs, but they can also be modified proteins. Bioinformatics allows us to design millions of compounds on the computer. From these, we can select the most interesting candidates, test them on tumor cells, and eventually try them in clinical trials. Bioinformatics is really an essential tool in this process because it would never be possible to synthesize all these compounds. While 3D modelization is of great help, it still requires months of experiments and calculations. It can happen that the magic molecule doesn't work. But there are also great successes, like the stimulation of the immune system or the generation of a potent anti-cancer agent, the IDO inhibitor. Bioinformatics has the potential to help treating all cancers, and it will play a major role in the coming decades. We are helping researchers across several research disciplines and we are really excited when we see their results published in highly ranking journals. While working in the life sciences produce an ever-increasing amount of data and formulate more and more complex models, access to high-performance computing expertise and power is still scant. But not at the SIB. The aim of our work is not only to provide computational resources, but also a place where one could find all the tools that are scattered across the world. A place where all these tools could be compared, checked, and the best suited being chosen. The SIB collaborates, for example, with researchers in the area of proteomics and differentially expressed proteins, in genetics and large-scale resequencing of genomes, or in single particle tracking used in imaging technologies. At the end of the day, we are all confronted with the same questions. How do we make sense of a very large body of data? How do we compare data that are coming from several different types of technologies? How do we actually interconnect databases that are scattered across the world? How do we relate this information with already published data? An excellent example is systems biology, a new research endeavor which tackles biological systems globally. So our work is focused on cell membranes. These are immensely complex structures that are composed of hundreds and thousands of lipids and proteins that fluctuate and assemble into microdomain. So to study these complex structures, we've decided to take a global approach. These approaches lead to a huge amount of data and therefore we need the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. They will not be a provider for us, they will be a collaborator and we will work hand in hand to try to understand these complex structures and model them. Systems biology could radically influence the way in which biological research is performed. And the SIB plays an important role in its development. Bioinformatics not only saved my PhD thesis, it inspired my future research career. Dengue fever is a tropical disease which threatens almost half of the world's population, and the number of cases is dramatically increasing. In more than 2% of cases, it causes lethal hemorrhaging, especially in children. Sadly, there is no specific treatment and no vaccine. Certain viral proteins play an important role during dengue infection, like the NS5 methyl transferase enzyme. Small molecules that can bind to the viral proteins 
and block their function can become lead compounds for drug development. But how do we identify these molecules? Working with industrial partners can be of great help, especially when it could lead to affordable treatment for millions of people. The first step carried out at the SIB involves screening a library of available molecules. Performed using atomistic-based simulation, these virtual experiments can predict a real experiment, but are much faster. We're simulating the binding of small molecules to the viral enzymes. For the docking aspect of this study, we're collaborating with a software company in New York. The scientists in my group and at Schrödinger are working closely together for defining the best strategies for the simulations and the interpretation of the results. Chemical compounds emerging as possible inhibitors of dengue fever methyltransferase will be tested in biological and biochemical assays. Experimental measurements are necessary to test if the compounds have the properties which were predicted by the simulations. These experiments are done by our collaboration partner in Singapore, the Novartis Institute for Tropical Diseases. In developing countries where the disease is endemic, the SIB's industrial partner intends to make treatments available without profit. The SIB hopes that this research will contribute to other discoveries which will tackle neglected diseases. There is no doubt that bioinformatics will continue to grow in the future. I even believe it could represent up to half of the efforts in biological research within the next 10 years. To fulfill its goals, the SIB will have to maintain its top standards and reputation, keep up with the ever-increasing demand of support for life science research projects from academia and from industry, and stay on track with its mission as a service provider and as the Swiss coordinator for bioinformatics and teaching. Bioinformatics increases our knowledge of life, its richness and its complexity. This in itself is wonderful, but above all, we are proud that our work benefits the scientific community at large and ultimately the whole population by contributing to enhance our standard of life. <laughs>